Hello, I'm Ron Strickland. This webcast is one of a series in which I'm presenting some brief lectures and commentaries on topics from the courses I teach in literature and cultural studies. This particular installment is one of a group on Joseph Conrad's novella, Heart of Darkness. And here I'll be saying some things about Conrad's relationship to the beginning of a decline in confidence in the values and assumptions of the European Enlightenment. So I want to begin today talking about modernity and what was happening in the first decades of the 20th century. And this first image I've shown you here shows the British possessions in Africa and Asia, also the French possessions in blue and in lighter orange, Portugal and its possessions, and Germany had some colonial holdings in, in Africa. They were about to lose those in World War I. So those were the colonial holdings around 1900. By the time of the Victorian era, and in the first decades of the 20th century, some British writers and intellectuals were beginning to become disillusioned and disenchanted with the idea of the British Empire as civilizing the so-called savages. So these writers and intellectuals of the early 20th century were disillusioned and disenchanted with the confident and even arrogant assumptions of cultural superiority and moral righteousness of the late 19th century. And already Conrad was onto that in the 1890s. Conrad's Heart of Darkness, the narrator, Charlie Marlowe, the sailor, is quite comfortable on a ship. There, he knows what to expect. The conditions are limited. Everyone has to depend on each other out on the ocean. And it's a comfortable, familiar place to him. When he goes on land, though, he does not know whom he can trust. And at the end of this novel, he's going to have to tell Kurtz's fiance how he died of what he was really like at the end. And it's not a pretty picture. Marlowe always wants to tell the truth when he finds when he has to go tell this innocent young lady who has this very high opinion of Kurtz's moral stature. He's going to have to tell her that he had gone crazy and was brutalizing the local population and that his methods of bringing in the most ivory of any outstation were quite irregular, murderous, really. He can't do it. Marlowe says, it seemed to me that the house would collapse before I could escape if I told this lie, that the heavens would fall upon my head, but nothing happened. The heavens do not fall for such a trifle. The editors go on to say, in works like these, a voyage is undertaken into a vast, unknown, dark expanse. Those few who come out alive have seen too much ever to be the same. That's the condition of modernity, facing an abyss when we no longer can depend upon the moral certitudes that had been taken for granted, certainly in the Middle Ages. Everyone assumed that there was a God, that God ordained this hierarchy under which society was ordered. There was no point in questioning it. But with modernity, among such changes as the transatlantic exploration and the encounter with alien cultures, with totally different value systems, with no knowledge of the tradition that the Europeans had been taking for granted, with the disruptions to the economic and political order that would come with urbanization, the industrialism, those things begin to break down the assumption of obvious self-evident order, right, truth, morality, that had been characteristic of the pre-modern society. All that might bring us in the 1880s to Friedrich Nietzsche. Some of you encountered Nietzsche before. Such phrases as his observation that God is dead, I think what Nietzsche meant in saying that God is dead was that it's impossible in 1882, impossible to experience the divine in the same way that it could be experienced by someone living at Chaucer's time. In 1882, one could no longer take for granted that God 
had ordained this particular social order, that God had placed each person in this place in the social order according to his divine will, and that every part of this was self-evident that one's life was laid out. It was Nietzsche's attempt to liberate humanity from what he saw as the false consciousness of adherence to a set of prescribed behaviors and attitudes and values that inhibited freedom and held people back. So the editors go on to say, Conrad's tragic figure, Kurtz, and also George Bernard Shaw's comic professor Henry Higgins in Big Malian, represent two very different takes on this idea, building on Nietzsche's interest in showing how all values are constructed rather than given, at some level arbitrary, all truths being merely opinions, all social identities merely roles. I don't think that all truths are merely opinions, or that all values are merely constructs, but I will say that effectively understandings of value are contingent and they're only operative in a community, only operative when there's some agreement upon what is a value or what is the truth. If one holds a truth that is really the truth all by oneself, it doesn't have any effect. For a truth to be effective, it, there has to be some agreement. There has to be rhetoric. There has to be an argument of persuasion so that a community will accept this truth as a truth. So we're not exactly free agents. That's in contrast, by the way, to an idea that, that Rene Descartes would be asserting when he said, I think, therefore I am. So just at this time, Intellectuals and writers were connecting these dots. And the editors, Kevin Dittmer and Julie Wick, the editors of our anthology, they write, the modern writer was faced with an enormous Nietzschean task to create new and appropriate values for modern culture and a style appropriate to those values. As a consequence, there's often a probing, nervous quality in the modernist explorations of ultimate questions. This quality can be seen at the very start of the century in Conrad's Heart of Darkness, a novel about psychological depth and social disintegration that simultaneously implicates its readers in the moral ambiguities of its events. These ambiguities, moreover, are reflected in the very presentation of the narrative itself. In the modern novel, we are no longer allowed to watch from a safe distance while our protagonists mature and change through their trials. Instead, we are made to undergo those trials ourselves through the machinations of the narrative. Okay, the point here is, in the modern novel often, even in its structure and the way it engages the reader, it doesn't give the reader a comfortable, safe space to stand on and observe the protagonist learn how to be a mature grown-up. So industrialization, urbanization, new developments in science, the breakdown of traditional religious communities, the breakdown of local communities. This was already happening in the late 19th century, and it has accelerated to the point at which now, in our lifetimes, We've seen smartphones, now the Internet of Things, and it's easy to see how those technological changes promote the fragmentation of community, how they change what it means to be human. Even in 10 years or so, it has been going on for 500 years. With that, I'll conclude for now. I'll have more to say about Conrad's Heart of Darkness in a subsequent video. As always, if you have questions or comments, send me an email.